what happened was Linda Gottlieb was working as the writer on a series at NET National Educational Television had been started. And she was the writer on a series called History of the Negro People. Linda Gottlieb said, you've got to get, you need a good film researcher on this series, and you've got to get Perry Miller done. She's the best. And so they offered me the job, and, and I was happy to come to National Educational Television. I always knew, I always knew that when it started, that someday I would be working for, for, for educational television. I mean, that was, it seemed to me inevitable. I think it was in the late 60s when I was doing work for NET, National Educational Television, not on staff but as a uh, contract. And um, I was in need of uh, some uh, archival research. And I was told the only person to see was Perry Miller Adato. And uh, if Perry was busy, she would find somebody else. But there was no question in those days that the one person who knew archives, the various archives, better than anybody else, and who get things for you quickly and at the best price, was Perry. Jack Venza had left CBS, and he had gone for a very, very good job at National Educational Television. And he was executive producer and, and producer, and did some marvelous things. It was very interesting to me because it was the Ford Foundation who were very, very aggressive in those years about putting money behind the arts and th cultural things that they thought needed major support since we didn't have national funding as they did in other countries. And they felt that their experience with Omnibus at CBS, which was a wonderful program about the arts, it was artistically very successful, but in the end, it ended up on Sunday afternoon again. It was not really considered a prime time show. And I think they thought, maybe our money might be better invested where ratings are not going to be the level of what is successful or failed. And they put money into this thing called National Educational Television that would serve some prime time programming for the many stations around the country. We started with a series called Creative Person, which meant that myself and maybe one or two other producers were producing half-hour programs about artists. And Perry, again, became very important to us because when we were dealing with something like, like the Impressionists, her vast catalog had not been touched in terms of the arts and, and adventure. And now we began to find ours that same relationship. The relationship was, Perry, I'm thinking of doing something on X. What do you think exists that we might build, particularly on the programs of, of, um, that were not American and people that were accessible to us? So along the way, there were certain things that Perry went back to over and over again, that the opportunities were good. And one of them was she suggested doing poetry. And I said, but how would we do that? She said, well, Dylan Thomas is such a colorful figure. Well, I loved Dylan Thomas. I mean, he at that time was my favorite poet. And after coming back with the subject a number of times, I said, you know, why don't you just do it? She said, I said, why don't you direct it? You've been working with everyone as a support. Since you have the real passion about this and about this material, why don't you put together a proposal and then why don't you produce and direct it? And that was important because it, it launched Perry from being a support to all of the other directors and producers of suddenly being told, okay, do it. 